I bet y'all wasn't expecting to see me. This program contains graphic material, including offensive language. Viewer discretion is advised. This is the panel with host Bob the God, Aaron Wilds Out TV, and the voice of T TV. Ooh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the panel with host Aaron Wilds Out TV, Bob the God. Myself, the voice of TTB, and today we have a special guest. We have the singer, the author, the director, and adult film star Mickey Taylor is in the building. Hey, hello, how are you? We're we're doing good. So, um, Mickey, um, I was while I was doing research on you, um, it seems like you you started your music career at twenty one in twenty fourteen, right? Uh, yeah, publicly to the world, I guess I did. Um, I had been doing musical theatre um, from the age of 18 to 21. So then when I kind of went into porn and stuff, um, like they do the interviews and they want to like do little magazines of like what you like were doing before you were a whore. And I was like, oh, you know, I could sing a bop or two and dance around a stage. And they were like, you should do something. And I was just like, I'm good, like, I am i don't want to. And then <laughs> um, I put something out after like, like a year and it just kind of took off from there. Yeah, so you um, so you got into porn first? Mm-hmm. Okay, oh. now I, I, I heard something, I, I, you know, I wanna know if it's true that you were actually scouted on Grindr. Could you tell us this story? <laughs> oh, wow, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> what had happened was I was on Grindr, um, I was running a nightclub at the time. I was a manager of a nightclub in Essex and oh, wow. I was modeling part-time. I had done since I was like three. And this guy on Grinder just was like, I've seen you model, um, you'd be really good at porn. And I was just like, respectfully go fuck yourself. <laughs> and um, this was like an ongoing thing for about three months. And I was just like, I don't like, I don't know. And I was slowly getting pulled around to it. That, co- that coercion and um, I spoke to my mom and I was just like mom what do you think of this and she was just like you need to do this like you have to do it and I was just oh, like wow. why and she was just like because in 10 years when you're fat and you're ugly and you're gross and you want to look back on your life and think you were fit you can so go do it and I was like okay I'll go do it and I loved it <laughs> oh my God. Yay, mom! Come on, she mama. Said, better, yes, get it together. She said, "You better go. You better go suck that dick now while you can. Right now, go do it." Now I panicked <laughs> so now. hard with her yes. because, mm-hmm. like, my mom is so like I'm from such a conservative town. It's a military town. Everyone is either racist, homophobic, or all all of them. And it's, it was always a weird experience. Like I was the only mixed race kid at school. My mom was the only black kid woman I knew in town. So like, oh, wow. we were raised very weird. Um, so like when it came to me coming out, that was a weird experience because like she was so supportive to the point where she was threatening other kids' moms to smash, smash faces in and stuff. And I was just like, none of this clocks to like the way I was brought up because I was kind mm. of raised in a very rough and kind of criminal environment. So she's always kind of had my back in the weirdest of ways. And I think it's just any reason to not have me in prison, I think. (laughs) 
some sort of protection. Your parents want to sometimes protect their children from the world. So you have to understand that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it makes it makes perfect sense. But um, when you did venture into music, I was like, wow, you know. You started, um, like I said, 21 with video games with the one and only La- Lana Del Rey. And you also worked um, on Puppets Lament with, with Chris Crocker. How did, it, how, how, did you, how did you hook up with these people so fast already? I'm like, wow, for a newbie, that's pretty good. Um, I remember speaking to Chris, like he slid in my DMs once and was flirting and I was flirting back. And this was when he was still like doing actual porn flick studios and stuff, not just like OnlyFans and stuff like we all do now. And um, like he was doing music and I like was talking about doing music. And um, I sent him a song through WhatsApp. Like I was singing to him through the phone and he was singing to me. And he was like, I have a really good idea for a song. And I was like, oh, okay. And we kind of just threw it together. And it was just this kind of, weird magical experience in my life because that whole album was so camp and so like for me it was my big camp awakening and like I felt like I found the rainbow at that point in my life <laughs> so that album definitely reflects that and having one of like the top tier faggots in my generation <laughs> on that album know. made my day <laughs> I know I was reading it I was like this is wow that's crazy for the first album now um the first album did okay but it was really the second album midnight palace with the lead um single sirens in chicago that was really a, a success for you that you were able to go on tour with that how was going on tour for the first time <laughs> very <laughs> nauseating um <laughs> like because like i'm I mean, I like I was indie then. I had no manager, no team. Right. If I was wearing costumes, it's something I was making myself. If it was songs, mm. I was making it myself with a producer. So it was just like me and a producer in Switzerland. And Alex Ray is incredible and I love him very much. But it like whenever I toured, it was always me on my own. So I remember flying out to Chicago and performing at the Grabby Award show. And it was my first time performing in the States. And I actually got a standing ovation. And I remember coming off the stage and like bawling my eyes out. And I was so emotional, but I had no one to be emotional with because I wasn't on tour with anyone. So then I had to have like my quick little blab backstage and then get back out on the tables and get back to compose mode, waiting for nominations again. So like, it was very lonely um, and very like, you wish you could see more of the world that you're in at the time because you're flying around the world and you're just seeing taxis, hotels, stage. And like, yeah, I didn't really get a chance to experience it with people. So that's the one thing I've always tried to push more with my music now is like having more people in my tracks and more people in the team. And now like I go everywhere for everyone. I'm so I'm so happy you said that because a lot of artists, they don't really talk about that side of the music industry where, you know, they're traveling the world, but they're not enjoying the world. They're not, you know, seeing the sights, eating at the restaurants. No, they're, they're just... Hotel, stage, next town. Hotel, stage, next town. It's the same as porn. I mean, like, you fly around the world. You're in, like, a taxi. They take you to your hotel. They give you the brief of what's going to happen the next day. You're on set until 10 p.m. And then you've probably got a scene the next day. You might get a day break in between them. But then you're just, like, refueling and sleeping. Mm. And then you'll have another scene. And then you fly home. So, like, for about eight years, I've not seen the world, <laughs> which is kind of <laughs> sad. I've You've seen, seen the world, but not seen the world. Glass windows, but mm-hmm. <laughs> I might as well That's have on postcards <laughs> like everyone else. <laughs> now, your third album, High Treason, it was a visual album. What made you go the visual album route? And um, you directed, by the way, I heard you directed that visual album. What, what made that happen? um shitty ex-boyfriends um that's what made that album happen that whole album was like therapy and like I was dating someone in the industry for about a year and it was a very very manipulative and abusive relationship and I really struggled with it coming out of it and I'm still in therapy and everything about him now and um I try and warn people away from him as best I can but like for me, I had so much rage in 
just inside of me I guess and I put it all into the words but then that wasn't enough for me and I had to show it more visually and for me like I like people don't realize that uh, when people abuse you and psychologically like entrap you into a life away from people and distance you from everyone that those scars are internal but you can't see them so for me a lot of the album was just I want war wounds in like all of my visuals because people don't realize that the abuse that people give them is forever scarring and Mm -hmm. so if I was gonna have this like emotional statement put out there I needed that person and the world to kind of see for myself like what I was going through and kind of apologize to the world in other ways that I'd been slacking or not being the best version of myself like trying to get through it so yeah <laughs> bit glam mm. I'm happy beautiful. you said that because people don't people don't talk about mental people don't talk about mental health yes. um yes. mental abuse in relationships enough they always talk about the physical abuse but never mm. the, the mental abuse but um speaking of your time in the adult entertainment industry um Aaron Wilds out there. He has a couple of questions for you regard regarding this. Go yes. ahead, Aaron. Yes, Mickey. How you doing? My name is Aaron. Hey, baby. Me, I don't hold no like I don't hold no slack. I say how I mean it. So if you if you're not ready for it, just let me know. <laughs> go let hard or go ready. home. Okay. Uh, my first question is how big that dick is. <laughs> um. That dick has no size. I have no idea. I've never measured it. Like, I've gone on so many different, like, porn sites and seen different size guesstimates. And I'm just like, just mean average them. So, I don't know. Okay. okay. I'm going to measure it for you. And I'll tweet you. And I'll let you know. I'm going to measure it for you later. Okay, great. Thank you. I would love to know. Um, Do you have sex to your own music? Oh, that's a good question. No, no, I don't. I think I have once, and that was because I was at a party and it came on. And mm. I was just like... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like getting fucked from behind. And they were like, is this your song? I'm like... Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 I, 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 get, I get super weirded out when my music comes on in like clubs and stuff. I walk out and go and have a smoke. Like I'm like, mm, mm, mm. like I went I, to a club in London and they were playing me and there was a video and you could just see everyone going like this. And I was like, this is a good time to go take a piss. I'm gonna go. Like I don't like it. It makes it it's so weird. It's so weird. Okay. I understand. Next question. Next question is what performer or performers was the worst experience and why? Uh-oh. Hmm. Okay, well, he's retired now, so I can say this, I think. But um, Darius Ferdinand was probably the worst time I've had on set, but he's also one of the loveliest people I've ever met. So it's really awkward because he's such a fucking diva on set. But like, yeah, I remember one day we were meant to film and he turned up two hours late and we were shooting in a club and we were meant, he was meant to be bottoming and I was meant to be topping. And then he got there and then said, I haven't had breakfast yet. Can you, can we have breakfast? So then they had to drive to Starbucks, get him Starbucks. We had to sit and wait for him to go and deal with all of that. And then he was like, oh, and I haven't douched. So then he had to go away for an hour, all the way back to the penthouse and then drive back to the club. And then he got there and then was like, oh, now I don't feel like um, doing just bottoming. Could we do verse? And then by this point, everyone's just like, we've waited four hours for this diva to even get on set. And now he's asking to change the scene. And then I just remember like um, him then going, well, doesn't Mickey now need to have a douche? And I was like, no, no, no. I always come prepared top or bottom in just in case shit happens. I'm, I'm always ready and on time. And that was kind of like my own, my own passive aggressive, like, fuck you. I was like, I'm here and I'm on time and I'm ready. And I I got ready for both situations. And then I remember like he wouldn't even do some of the positions in this like bathroom that we had to do. He didn't want to like lay on the floor or like put his hands on the ground. And I was just like, this diva gets paid so much money and I'm getting paid half of what he gets paid because I was so new at the time. 
And I was just like, I don't understand how some of these boys make the dollar they do. And then like, yeah, like that was like five years ago though. So that he was like in his prime at that time. And I was like secondary level Digimon. Do you know what I mean? Like I haven't got <laughs> there yet. Not Digimon. <laughs> I fucking love I have... Digimon, don't you? That was it. the shit though. <laughs> I never loved it. I just have three words for that. Um, worst bottom ever. That's it. Um, what? Name three male performers you would love to collaborate with sexually. And I'm talking about either singers or rappers. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. Mm. I would love to have sex with an artist called Borns. I think that his music is really, 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 really sexy. And he's really good to listen to when you're stoned. And I think we'd have really good slow sex. <laughs> like we have like a slow jam sex session. But then I also would love to have sex with Kendrick Lamar. I think he's so fucking beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think I would like Troy Savan, just so I can break a twink. Okay, you never broke a twink before. Okay, good to know. Yes. <laughs> not broke. Uh, live for not broke it. one yet. Not broke one yet. I put a few in yes. hospital by accident. Oh. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I get it. No, it's okay. Um, what are the experiences you haven't done sexually yet, but want to? There isn't any I don't. Oh no, I'm lying. I've always had a dream of like you know like Russian roulette you know like a roulette table mm -hmm. just imagine like 10 people around that roulette table and just like yeah just just spin the wheel That's, yeah I've always wanted to do a scene like that but like yeah <laughs> I think that would be what I would want to do okay I live for that I'm not totally getting a scene in my head but I see a lot of digs going in my face. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. I live for a lot of digs in my face. So. I'm the chapel, come and pray. Hey. Oh. I live for a good um church scene. I would love, like I said, I would love to do a pastor. It's not. Oh no, I'd want it satanic. Like I'd want to be in like a satanic church. I'd want me spun really? around on like a Russian roulette pentagram. Oh, fuck yeah. But I want me to be the priest. Well, you know what? That I want so them weird. to be like satanizing me. Like I want to be like a good Catholic priest, and they're like, "Not today." And I'm like, okay. maybe that's a, a, a idea for a future Ooh. film, mm -hmm. a concept. Or Mickey thing and the no, that, Yeah, that's a future film and <laughs> a future <laughs> video. That's, a future I like video. Yeah, go now. In a performance. In a performance don't worry, my question will bring us Nipple. back to heaven. Don't worry, we're gonna be all right. Wait. My last question, my last question, um, Mickey, is what's, you talked about your, you know, your horrible ass exes. So you, you know, you're single now. No, Are no, no, single? I'm not. Single? I'm engaged. Okay. Uh -oh. Yes. What, so my last question was going to be, what's your ideal man? He's but since upstairs you're single, in bed, annoyed that I'm probably still awake. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> Good answer. Take it away. Bugs. No, yeah, I've been with Ronnie almost two years. He is in the industry as well. He is absolutely incredible. Um, he edits all of my music videos, all of my porn content. Um, he is an insane fire performer. So we get to do a lot of performances together and stuff. It's just, yeah, it's one big creative house with zero arguments and a lot of like getting each other through what we need to in the day i i love him so much i really do okay good we're gonna um uh, i'm gonna take this and give it to bugs all right thank you thank you um we're gonna come back to heaven we're coming back to heaven Aaron took us to hell no we on our way back up okay so um first of all i want to just give this disclaimer um i'm a spiritual person which means i'm open-minded and i'm willing to learn as much as i can because i don't know everything i can admit that um, but if I say anything that um, is not accurate, please do not hesitate to correct me on that. Because once again, I'm learning. Um, as I was doing more research on you as well, 
I found this interview you did recently with Chewing the Cud. So shout out to them, Chewing the Cud. Um, there were a few things that stuck out to me in your interview spiritually in a good way. But there was one in particular where you was um, announcing that you were doing a UK tour and then said after that, oh, I'm, I'm fucking freaking out. You know what I mean? I, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So with that being said, like to me, that revealed that you're walking in a level of power and freedom that requires faith. I mean, you've accomplished so much, you know what I'm saying? Being an actor, director, model, singer, a dog performer, you have all these things under your belt. Um, I'm sure those journeys have kind of been very fucking crazy. So I guess my first question to you is, how do you maintain faith to make it through diff the most difficult moments of life? Ooh. Um... I think for me, uh, the people in my life have always been like my center and my rock. I think that all of my faith is on them and my faith comes from them. Um, there's been many, many times where I've hit like absolute down pits and in many different ways and in many different forms. And there's always been someone around me who's had my back at that like last point where I can't take it anymore. Like, I like to internalize a lot of my problems to the point of I can't handle it anymore. Here comes the breakdown. And that's mm -hmm. the point where like they're always kind of there for me and they've always stuck up for me. So I think that like my faith is more in people than right. in like any kind of beyond faith for me because oh. I was always kind of forcibly told like... <laughs> your goals can only be reached if you're going to do them. No one else is going to help you. Like you yeah. have to get shit done yourself. yourself. Exactly. And like, there's no point in procrastinating or saying I'm going to do it on Monday because you aren't going to do it on Monday. So get it, get up and do it now. And I've always been one of those people. So when I can't do that anymore, that's when my shit hits the fan. And that's when I'm like, someone hug me. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it's, 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 it's amazing to me how, like even though you just shared all that, you're still able to make it through and that you've been able to take a lot of what you've dealt with, like you said, as far as instead of internalizing it, but really finding this awesome outlet through your music, even through your, inter your um, uh, uh, performance and reference to uh, adult entertainment, all these things, you're kind of like showing a part of yourself in all these different areas. And it's so dope because I, I remember on the same interview, uh, I think you were at a club with, uh, I think it was two very well-known drag queens, if I'm not mistaken. And someone just came up to you and said, oh my God, it's Mickey. They were crying. And oh my God, can you please talk to my boyfriend? All that stuff. Like, it's so crazy how your life and what you've been through and the fact that you're going through it is inspiring so many people. Um, so in the same interview, you shared that um, some people in the community had an issue with your sexuality in reference with you identifying as pansexual. Um, they had a lot of nasty things to say. Um, in your <laughs> personal opinion, do you feel that those comments are coming from a place of insecurity? And also, has there ever been a comment made that you've seen that made you face any insecurity within yourself? Ooh, um, you really got like, like deep questions. Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> I think that I wouldn't say there's ever been a comment that's really like cut me deep or made me feel insecure because as I say, like I've been modeling since the womb. I've had like oh. people, how I've stood up in lines and had like people poke and prod and tell me every ugly part of my body mm -hmm. and then shoot me out the door. Um, I've had, you know what I mean? Like it, I've had the really kind of like rough, degrading, horrible things said to me throughout growing up um so nothing that kind of is said now is original <laughs> Come on now, yeah. I, or it's always about like oh too many tattoos or why can't you just keep your hair one thing or why do you dress so strange and I'm like all of those things are just defining points of me rather than mm -hmm. insults so mm -hmm. that's never really phased me um in that sort of way but yeah I don't know. <laughs> but that's why I was saying, like, it, it's, it's awesome to see you walk in a, in a level of freedom. And a lot of people are threatened by freedom. 
I mean, even in the interview you did with uh, Chewing the Cud, when you were going further into the whole pansexual uh, situation, you was like, why does that even fucking matter? I'm still part of the community. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They were telling you, drop, renounce your gay card. You should never say gay again. It's like, I'm still going to be different. But that's crazy. Yeah. How can you sit up here and get mad at people who see you as different, but then turn around and do the same thing? It's just weird. But you're walking in a level of freedom, which is like, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to be me. And this is why your shit is coming true and you are blessed like you really are blessed and i'm glad to see it um i think you just have to do it unapologetically you know what yes, i mean like yes, you have yes. to no one else is going to live this life for you and if you're going to live it half because you're going to let people cut you down or like you put up hurdles for you then you're never going to fully live it mm -hmm. um and yes people are gonna be attacking you for being homosexual for being mixed race for doing porn for doing whatever because people don't like what they don't know yes. and that's what people don't like and there's a fear in that and there's an insecurity in that and there's a, like a hint of jealousy in all of that yes. and I mean I know I'm a subject of it myself and I know I'm criminal for it I look at other people in my industry and I go oh my God, I wish I was them. I wish I was making the money they're making. I wish I had the success they're having. Like we all do it, but we all then have to then look at that moment and then go, but how do I get there? Right. Uh, rather than going to that person, oh, fuck you for having your right. life and blah, blah, blah. It right. has to be, I want what they have. How do I get that in my way? And how do I use the tools I have to get it and if I don't have them how can I learn right exactly and I mean look at you now like you're it's people saying the same things about you that you know you were saying about some of these other people and this this segue is amazing thank you for that <laughs> so like how are you dealing with your growing hyper visibility like mentally and emotionally how are you dealing with that um Last year, the visibility wasn't so high for a little while, which was nice mm -hmm. because, like, the albums would, like, they popped up and then, like, you had, like, billboards and shit kind of talking, yes, which yes. was really insane. Again. Congratulations. Um, but then because, like, at that point, I then got signed and then I, like, signed with a producer and stuff, we then, I had a team of support again, you know what I mean? Like, like I was saying before, like, having that system around me is so essential to, like, keeping me alive. Um, so I think that at that point when the trajectory was going, it would I could handle it and I had that support system. And it really wasn't um like getting to me at the same time. Cause everyone was like, Are you kidding me? Like you're doing this and you're doing that. And I was like, mm -hmm. Yeah. But it was, <laughs> I think it's because the next thing was already on the way and I was working right. towards something yeah. else. And because I do the music and I have the show and the porn and stuff. I'm never thinking about one for too long because I don't like getting bored. But I think there's mm. a little bit of ADHD as well as my bipolar in there, I think, in the sense that mm -hmm. I can't do the same thing for more than a week. That's why I like having so many jobs so then I don't have to. I got That's you. just a consensus of boredom. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I Like, it was going great and I was happy. And then I had the low where I started calling out all the terrible people of industry. And then I noticed that follow count and the everything mm. go low mm. but then as soon as you stop talking about it it all goes straight back up again which yeah. I find really insane like they they want to listen to the music they want to see your face they want to like hear about your personality but as soon as mm. you want to speak up for everyone around you no one, one wants to hear it that was a very daunting moment but yeah like now it's really climbing up again and it's like I keep doing things like this on a weekly basis which is really weird still um, <laughs> but you know like as I say I have an incredible team that kind of take on some of the burden and masturbating vig vigorously really helps I'm huh. like I'm just gonna say just pump and go like one in the morning one at lunch have a quick nap and then have one at night smoke throughout I agree I agree now, you guys, I hate I hate to break up this conversation, you guys, but we have to take a quick commercial break. Now, for no. those of you watching it, for those of you watching at home, go grab a snack and bring that ass back. You are watching the panel. Guys, um, I need to borrow some clothes.
for the interviews because I don't have any fancy clothes. Go to Mike's house, you take whatever you need. Okay. You too, Brennan. You guys got to look sharp. It's the most important day of our lives, okay? Okay, Dad. What's your name? What's your name? What's your age? What's your age? Where you from? gentlemen and we are back here at the panel with our special guest mickey taylor now mickey i heard you have over a hundred tattoos is that like have you really counted them yourself like what at one point it was a hundred but now they're all kind of merged together because like of it they were like individuals but now they've all become like some areas are becoming sleeves and chest pieces mm-hmm. so it's probably more like i don't know like 30 40 now but yeah it was like 100 at one point about four years ago yeah which one's your favorite do you have like a favorite tattoo um you know what i used to always tell people i did which was uh the x on my butt um but now like everyone talks about it and a couple of people have got it tattooed as well so now like I have to get a new one and then like not tell anyone about it and then that will be my my favorite one I'll have to hide it somewhere that no one ever sees on my body maybe like the inner lining of my butthole or my mouth or something in between the toes or something in between the toes now you tweeted out um a couple of days ago maybe two days ago Something that I was just like, wait, what? You said you're not a prostitute. However, five years ago, you might have been. Can we talk about this tweet, please? Because it threw me for a loop. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> once upon a time, when, not long ago. Mi- <laughs> when, when little Mickey was a little broke, um, <laughs> so I had a client. I, well, I had three. I only actually had the three because... Um, I remember finding it very awkward and uncomfortable. So I would have the three because then I can get used to them and not be too weirded out by them over time and then keep it discreet that I was doing it. Um, Like I try and put myself on those sites a couple of times, but everyone that messaged on there was like very uncomfortable. (laughs) Um, So yeah, I had like these three dudes and then like the two kind of filtered out and there's this one guy and he, he, oh, he used to call himself Daddy John every single time. And he, st- he would come around and tell me about all the other guys in the industry that he'd managed to have sex with. But he never got these cookies, I tell you this much. Oh. He, like, he got some oral and some dry humping and yes. copious amounts of beer. But never, ever did I let that man have sex with me because he made me feel so uncomfortable. He mm. made me feel like a 13-year-old boy with a 50-year-old man. It's the only way wow. I can describe it. Like, I felt like I was being molested by him. And I was like, I'm not doing this again. Um, but yeah, like, that was like, yeah, I had three. And then, well, actually, no, like, two years prior to that, I helped a friend of mine out who had, like, an oral client. And this guy had to suck me off. But that's about it. Yeah. Oh, hey, hey, this is a, hey, this is the panel. Yeah, this is a no judgment zone. So. Judge me free. Be you. you are, hey, I don't you care. Are. It, I've... I've <laughs> Yeah, we already well, this Listen, one thing I I live, I live somebody living in a truth. I live yes. for everything. Yes. Okay. If I had three clients like that, bitch, please. It would be freezing. <laughs> he would be freezing. I, I tell you that damn much. I wanted to fuck on at 13. No shade. Not 13. <laughs> Aaron, I can't remember. And anyways, um, <laughs> so I was on vacation, right? And I met a couple of people from the UK. And uh, they're, they're all lovely people, but a couple of them were into doing horse tranqu- tranquilizers. Is that a thing down there? They say oh, they you get... mean ketamine? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Is this cat. The name? Everyone does cat. I do you do, do that? Have you... No, no. When when I did drugs, it was more much more of a cocaine thing. If you look somewhere in the room, you'll see my rehab poster. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Because <laughs> I saw I saw them actually do it at the resort and it just blew my mind. I was like, what are y'all? And mind you, they were so young, they were like 19 years old. I'm like, what is happening? I, like people fall into K-holes and they're just like 
wigging out on the sofa, like losing themselves. And like, I've seen people like piss themselves and all kinds of crazy. So I do not touch that stuff. Um, Mm. I'm not really a party sex drug person. I'm more of a party club person. Like I'll take a bag of Coke, find me in the club. I'll be having the best time of my life, but I'm like a casual drinker though. Like I'll sit there with a group of people who have the best time of my life, giggling, laughing. They'll get up and dance a couple of times, try and make me dance. And I'm like, no, bitch. But then, like, <laughs> I'm always, like, the conversationalist friend in the corner that doesn't want to get up. Um, so, yeah, like, a couple That's of me. bumps and some drinks, and I'm good. And then I'm just sat there just revealing the universe to everyone and, like, getting it back. <laughs> well, you know, hold, hold up uh, the p- panel, guys. Uh, Aaron, Bubs, have you guys ever dabbled in, like, hardcore drugs? No. Talk about, you said we have I what? Have a hardcore drug. <laughs> Is your mom watching this? Uh, no, it ain't that. No, I, no. I mean, I see a lot of vocal shit. So she watching. Hey, ma, how you doing? Well, let me. Um, uh, <laughs> let, me answer, let me answer first. Um, I have never dealt with hardcore drugs. Like people before my relationship, people have wanted to have sex with me on hardcore drugs because it made them last longer and made them have sex all night yeah i just couldn't i just couldn't have sex with a person who who does heroin who does coke who does anything i don't even like if if y'all want to do poppers okay fine i just don't do it like you know i don't judge nobody like do you like have fun you know take a trip i don't you know i party you know i've party i've done um molly and the white girl, back in, you know, back in, you know what I'm saying? When I first turned 21, I was, uh, I was out in these New York City streets. <laughs> <laughs> good times, good times. What about you, Bubs? Uh, listen, the only hardcore drug I ever fucking done was an edible. That was too fucking strong. And I had a whole trip and that changed my life. The only thing I fuck with is weed. That's it, so... If you want to do other stuff, that's cool. That's fine. But me Wait, in my house, um, I do acid trips like every three months. Now that's amazing. I've you heard about acid, that. You do acid trips? I do acid trips every three months. Yeah. I look. How is try, uh, Ayahuasca. It's incredible. Like it's you. You. I go in there with a bunch of questions I need to ask myself and like conversations. Mm. And then when you're on the trip and you kind of like sink. It's, it, I, I always say to people, it reminds me of Get Out, you know, when he sinks yeah. in. But just before he enters the deep, there's like that marshmallowy kind of floor feeling. That's how you kind of feel. And then like you just see a kaleidoscope of beautiful patterns that are just falling out of the wallpaper and the laminate. And then you just kind of go to tell yourself something that you think really matters. And then mm-hmm. you're just like, you know what never mind and it kind of just falls off you so yeah like Mm. for about two weeks after you're in such like a positive energy and uh, yeah it's something you should really do like I always say to people once in (laughs) life give it a go but make sure you're with people you're in a safe environment and you've done it with someone that's done it before and drink plenty of water yeah Yeah. I don't know I've been um I've been so high before right that one time (laughs) Okay, I was writing a Facebook status at 2 a.m. in the morning, right? Mm. I did I did not stop that I did not stop writing that status until 2 p.m. the next day. And then you know what the gag is? I never I never pressed send. I just deleted it anyways. Oh my god. <laughs> you could have had wrote down the cure for fucking cancer and then deleted the shit because you over here. <laughs> Okay, if we share you a story... Been, you could have been the next Beethoven in your unconsciousness, <laughs> and we'll never know. <laughs> if we share stories about the first time... I, I did a video on this, but the first time I had... The, um, the second time I had an edible was really the trippiest because mm-hmm. I had... Um, I did a small party at my house, a small little gathering, and I had a chef come over. First of all, this chef that I had was a, um, a recovering... I'm um, druggy, a drug person. He would do hardcore drugs and he was in prison. He could cook down, by the way. I live for him. Um, <laughs> but he hit, we hit each other up on Adam for Adam and everything. In the lab. We had edibles. Like, I got my um, friend to give us some weed, give me some weed butter. 
So I made some cookies. I made some edibles. I made my own edibles. And we ate some edibles. And then he was like, well, it's really not doing nothing. So I was like, what the oh, hell? Did, no. did my friend just like jit me on this fucking trash ice wee butter? So I started eating some more. I ate like five of them. And first of all, oh, I don't no. do I don't do weed like that. I'm a I'm a first time like weed person. So mm. I don't do weed like that. So I just kept eating. I'm like, I'm not feeling none either. By an uh, hour or two later, I started laughing. I fell asleep once. I fell asleep and then I woke up laughing. And then we went in my room and I sucked his I sucked him off. And I literally FaceTimed my friend is like, help me. I was like, stop me from sucking him. So why do you want to suck him? I'm crying. Yes, I was sucking him. I was on FaceTime with my friend. Please stop me. <laughs> I was, I was going to say now, speaking of sucking, um, Mickey, um, you, you at one point, you retired from porn. What made you come back? Oh, I'm not back. I am not doing studio porn for shit. They mm. can go fuck themselves. Yeah. Um, I am sick and tired of the racism. I am sick and tired of the rapists. I am sick and tired of the corruption. They can all go fuck themselves. And until they decide to call themselves out, I ain't doing nothing. And they want to be worried because if my the one thing that I will do if I ever get to a point where my I can use my popularity to crush these motherfuckers, I will bring them all down. Mm. All mm. of them. Who? Who specifically? Who specifically? Not the name <laughs> name. Just give us the studio. Right, like who specifically? <laughs> um, well, you can literally go through every single studio right now and you'll find that one to two percent of the casting on their sites is actually black or Asian. Mm. It's fucked up. <clears throat> Facts. And then you speak to them and then they're getting paid less. Yes. Uh, and of course there was um unfortunately an allegation against him by uh From former pa- yes who said that you know um he ended up getting drunk with him in his uh, his hotel room and he advanced made advancement onto him or whatever and when he came up on the show he didn't really like clear it up or anything he kind of walked around it so like yeah what I is saw your his video thought? on Facebook walking around it as well you said what he was walking around it on his Instagram and his Facebook yeah. as well so and like do you have saying... any thoughts like personally on that situation like do you what are your thoughts do you believe that that was be something that he would do or I Allegedly. think I have opinions on both of them personally. I think that Papi Suave is a racist motherfucker. Um, and I can't bear oh, really? him. If you go through mm-hmm. his Twitter, the amount of times that he's saying that like niggas are beneath him wow. and that they are just sex toys to him and shit. And then like he goes through this massive attack <clears throat> through the BLM movement last year. Yeah, I saw that. Everyone saw that. calling him out for being a piece of shit. And then a month later, he's calling out Shishi for touching him. Sympathy mm-hmm. goes back to him. Popularity mm-hmm. back up. Okay. So I see it in two ways. Shishi is a fucking mess. I've seen her drunk. We've all seen her drunk. We all know how she behaves. Has she mm-hmm. done something? Probably. I mean, mm-hmm. this is a, it's like one of the smaller stories of some of the bigger ones I've heard in this right. industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so in retrospect, in the grand scheme of all this shit I've heard, this one seems like nothing. So yeah, mm-hmm. it probably did happen. Um, mm-hmm. but I do I do hold issue with um the way she's dealing with it. Like I'm not about to sit here and tell a victim that uh, it didn't happen to him. Right. And I'm not about to agree that sh- that she's right because I think they're right. both as bad as each other. Um mm-hmm. uh, so, you know, I don't have an opinion on either of them, but I do have an opinion on the fucking entitlement that she's displaying right now. On the whole, I can't go and work in Walmart. I can't go and do this. I, I'm a director. This is what I do. Take mm. me back. And it's like, bitch, fuck you. Because at the end of the day, everyone is hustling. Everyone is working their ass off right now, trying to do the best they can with what little money they have and they're grateful exactly. for any fucking penny 
or any job that someone can give them. And now that the money's dried up from her friends that, that she's got, she's like, oh, now I really need my work back and I need my job back. There's still no real apology, no mm. real full description of the night from her end, no real proof of anything. She Just her going, it didn't go down like that. It didn't go down like that. Well, how did it go down then, bitch? Because I'm, mm. um, you know what I mean? So she's a motherfucker, personally, mm-hmm. and her entitlement makes me sick because, like, get a fucking job. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. OnlyFans could shut down tomorrow and my, le- and my like, team behind me could all decide they don't want to work with me again. You better believe I'm going to be down the job center going to get a job because mm-hmm. I've got money. I've got, I've got money to pay and I've got food to put on the table. If I mm-hmm. fuck this shit up, that's on me to deal with. Yes. And then, like, if people don't want me back, then that's my problem. And that's something I've got to deal with because I did something so heinous that wow. I've got to be accountable for it. Mm-hmm. And she hasn't been accountable for it. So people are doubling down on her. And mm-hmm. now she's mm-hmm. asking for forgiveness and retribution and money. Holy shit. Oh, you know, Nikki. My job. Nikki. They all make me a... sick. All these studios fucking make me sick. Don't get me wrong. I am no saint. I've been arrested. I've got my I've got like a little bit of naughty in me, but I admitted what I did. I put it out in public. I said what how it went down. The other person said how they went down and how we are biggest thieves and best of friends. We just got drunk and like got slap happy with one another <laughs> um, and went Beyonce in an elevator. You know what I mean? <laughs> like we just had jokes about it. And we but then we realized that we were both uh, that we were both addicted to drugs, drunk too much alcohol, and had jealousy issues. We mm-hmm. went to therapy, dealt with our shit, went public with it, and then said, yo, bad moment in my life, I was a diva. I'm now, like, a better person, you know what I mean? And you, t- you take accountability. Thank you. And you don't, Thank you. you don't inflict your mm-hmm. shit on other people, because that's what they're doing at the moment. That is, is what she, she is doing. And so is Just For Fans and all the other motherfuckers mm-hmm. out there that keep doing shit and will not take accountability and will not speak up, will not say their side, just go, it didn't happen. It didn't it didn't go down that way. How did it happen then? Because at this point, exactly all it like everyone else is showing the receipts, and all you're doing is saying, mm-hmm. but I didn't buy it. But mm-hmm. you clearly did. You know what I mean? So if if you're gonna do something and if you're gonna cause problems within the industry, what which mine didn't. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, do you know what I mean? But I still went public with what I, like, the one sin I created in my life because I wanted people to know that you can overcome your hurdles and deal with your shit. But I didn't, like, damage an entire fucking industry of trust and, like, people that re- rely on you financially in the process. And that's what she's done. And now she's asking for retribution and compensation. Fuck her. Fuck just for fans. Fuck all those little racist models that keep coming up. And if these studios don't sort their shit out too, the ones that haven't been called out yet, I've got a phone full of receipts. I'm waiting to hit send. Fuck them all. But that's oh, why I'm saying God. your God. opinion, God. who you we, are, is we important. You have to have you on the panel to like yeah. air this shit out because yeah. I love a good air out. Empty out the motherfucking clips because I want to know. But that's why your <laughs> he gave us very he important. gave us a whole mouth. But that's what and, I'm saying. You're like, very this important. is the thing. They think that they're, they're because they're in power that they can intimidate us all into silence. Like I've got the owner of Just for Fans who has been trying to sue me for almost a year for defamation, wow. for slander, trying to get compensation out of me. And he's not going to get a fucking penny because all I did was report on something that was a public interest story about two mm-hmm. public figures. And it, I was only reporting on the evidence that was given to me. So it's not defamation and it's not slander. And if he lost any money, it's because he's a motherfucker that raped someone and needs to sort his shit out and be accountable for it yes. rather than trying to sue the victims into silence. Yes. And Stop this is the shit. problem. The people with money have the power and the people with the power are trying to silence the people that don't because they know that we rely on them for a source of income and a source of revenue and a lot and our lives 
but at the same time is is they need us because if we yes. fucking all stop filming for them yeah they're fucked they, and, they're the it, and there's no way to recuperate especially during a pandemic so mm-hmm. see how many times they want to fuck people off because we all know for a fact that people have been getting removed off of only fans they've been boycotting it they've been boycotting just for fans they've been boycotting certain studios shishi naru has been boycotted I'm all, I'm, I'm not, I don't agree with cancel culture, but consequence culture, fucking bring it. Oh, I like that. I like that. But that's why I was saying, like, you're very important in reference to your story and your truth. Like, all the things that you've been through, like you said, you're using your platform not only to just, you know, show people that, look, you can take your hurt, your pain, whatever you're going through, put it through music. If you're going to go through those emotions, go through those emotions in a way that's transformative. Mm. But you also said that if you get to a certain level of power, you're going to start calling these people out to make change and see like individuals like you are going to inspire so many people to stand up because now it's somebody with power. It's somebody yeah. with influence. It's somebody with well, it's like, it's, mm-hmm. like a year ago, no one was talking about like what uh just for fans in particular until myself and Tana brought it mm-hmm. to the public and then it became headlines but and then it became stories but all the way through that I was hemorrhaging money I was losing thousands of pounds a month while still mm-hmm. trying to talk to lawyers and get him off of my back and while the following count was dropping and it was right after I just had the biggest peak of my life and I was so happy so I had put myself through absolute hell and the mm. things that I was going through. But at the end of the day, the shit that I'm going through is nothing compared to the fucking shit that these people are doing. And I have a small amount of power now. And I was able to use that influence and that power to get people's voices heard and help those victims. And I appreciate that not all other models can do that or want to do that because they're not in a financial place where they can speak out against the people in control or that they've got their own story to share, but they're too scared to share it. There is 10, 20, 30 people around you that will help you through it. And like, we have got your fucking back because we don't owe these people shit. And they do not deserve to treat anyone like this. And we don't deserve to be treated like it. I've been sexually assaulted on set twice. I've seen it happen to someone about three times. This, um, but it's it's a it's disgusting it is the industry but you know what i mean i can't speak out for those three people unfortunately until they're ready because it is yes. their story and their truth but i've spoken up about mine and i've spoken up about my abuse effects in the industry you know what i mean because it's my truth and my story and if someone wants my help in telling theirs i'll help them but until then i won't get involved you know what i mean but yeah by a lot of shit goes down in this industry and people need to really fucking have a deep investigation on some of these studios because there's some corrupt speaking motherfuckers. Of, speaking of your story, did you write about this in your in your book, in your books? And you have a Mickey Taylor part one, a complicated evolution, and then Mickey Taylor part two, almost Mickey. Did you write about any of these experiences in the book? I didn't get a chance to read them. No, because the first book is from like 11 to 14, 15. And then the second book is like 16 to like 20. And then the one I've been writing for the last couple of years has been from 21 to now. So it's Mm -hmm. like all of the young crazy stuff that happened, like all of like the crimes I witnessed within the family and like... I remember one girl getting fucking herself with a hairbrush at school, so I made sure that was in the book. Oh. Um, like how I lost my virginity, that's in the book. Like wow. I've got, yeah, like it's I I write very comedically because I'm a child, and like for me, tragedy plus time equals comedy. So everything that is tragic in my life, I've put it in there but in such candid ways. Yeah. So people like <laughs> have read it to me and they're like, you're talking about being raped, but I'm laughing. And I'm like, oh, wow. good, because you're healing and I'm right. healing with you. So like you. cry, but laugh at the same today. time. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, I do the same. So, yeah, I, I, laugh, it's I a, laugh at my stories too. Yeah, it's all early trauma, that one. But yeah, I am working on that book and it, they're all named. Yeah, they're all named. Wait, hold on. We have to unpack this. We have to unpack this because I feel like you went you went past that really fast. 
What do you mean there was a girl fucking herself with the hair? Like, like she was in class. <laughs> well, 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 before before you go in, I just want to say the reason why they was there is because listen, she said her pussy hair is not nappy. Her shit lay down. Go ahead. I don't know what to tell you. I had a very colorful childhood. It was. It was fascinating. Read the book. It's a comedy. I tell you. I'm looking. Bitch. How did you know she was doing it? To... <laughs> bitch, let me let me try, bitch. <laughs> my pussy hair is not nappy. My shit lay down. Amen. Oh my goodness, that that is a mess. But let me um let me dive into your music real quick. Um. Yes. I loved I loved your latest single, "Jokes" featuring Lost Child. Yes. Now I just. Hold on, I just want to. I just want to. Um, I want to read the lyrics, okay? Because the lyrics are a little off-putting, okay? You say, you say, and I quote: "I was only making jokes when I told you that I loved you. How do I explain? I'm afraid to die alone, so I so I hold you. It's not about you. I'll never feel the same. I was only making jokes when I told you that I feel you. I never felt that way." So baby, get your coat. You can have a toke. Totally. Then I'm gonna send you on your way. Ah. Now, Mickey, Mickey, why would you hey. joke like that? I took that so personal because you know men play too many games. So why why are you playing games with the men? Why are you playing games? What did you mean by that? <laughs> it was. This is one of the last kind of songs I wrote about like that bullshit ex of mine because, like, for me, I got to a point where. I was like, you know what, fuck you. I'm gonna keep you about, like, I don't even like you anymore. I don't even want you in my house. I don't even love you at this point. But like, I am gonna keep you about in this fucking house because you seem to want to use me at this point. Like, I'm about to use you for the next, like, month to get this rent paid and then you're out the fucking door because mm. I've had enough of you. And the joke will be on you for all the shit you've done on me because you're gonna be out of here. And that was kind of like what I was thinking in my head. Okay, we're about to close out the interview. Couple last you questions. With me, um, I will poison the motherfucker while I put him out. I was so okay. <laughs> You're going to jail. So um, it's okay. God gave Mickey. him a small dick. So <laughs> <laughs> Mickey, who are your favorite musical influences? Like, who influences you as a singer? Halsey, um, Troy Zavan. Bulow, Bourne's, Grimes, uh, um, Flyleaf, My Chemical Romance, Paramore. I, I listen to some random. It, it goes like I listen to all kinds of people. Like I'm listening to Jaden Smith yeah, at the moment, God. and like no one else I know <laughs> likes his music. And I'm like, but he's great. <laughs> now, out of all of your albums, which one is your favorite? Mm-hmm. The new one. Troubled. Is that the new one? That's the latest one? No, 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 no. Surrender? The new one coming out. Oh, the out. new one coming out. Okay, it hasn't been released yet. Okay, um, three more questions and then we can dive into the mess again. Um, but um, which song was the quickest of yours to write? Mm-hmm. Ah. Mm-hmm. Stop your ass. <laughs> Sirens in Chicago took me an hour. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Now, which song? Which song was the longest to write? Probably one on this new album. It took about two weeks. Mm. Okay. Now, la- last musical question. Um, which song was the hardest for you to record in the studio? That like it took an emotional toll over you to even like get the session done. Um. I cried all the way through singing on Surrender, Don't Go. Um, and yeah, that was about Ronnie. And yeah, I bawled my eyes out like about four or five takes. And then like Lost Child like still has like little bits of me sniveling, like trying to compose my shit. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you know what? I just wanted to, you know, Get you your musical flowers. Now, you guys, we can dive right back into the fucking mess on the last five minutes. So, do y'all have any questions to further ask him about the, the fuckery that's going on in the porn industry? Because he was saying a lot. But I wanted to make sure I covered his music, you know, his music and stuff. Yes. I don't know if I got my chance of that in me. 
I do have one I, question about music, and I'm talking about your music video and your directing. What's one of what's your favorite moments on directing your music videos? What was your favorite moment? Mm. I think once it's out there, um, because all the way through, like for jokes, for example, um, I didn't direct that one, but I edited it, edited it with Ronnie, and it took about three weeks. Mm-hmm. And I just remember it was a lot of stress, a lot of me and him going, can you get this bit done? Can you get that bit mm-hmm. done? <laughs> mm-hmm. So um, for me, the best part is um, when it gets out there and you see the response and like people commenting and talking about it. Um, yeah, I think that's probably the best moment. Cobbs, do you have anything to say about the industry and what he was talking about earlier or the um, airbrush? Yeah, oh, I'm still not it. over the hair brush. That is fucking hilarious. I um I have my hair brush here. Um, um I don't like big dicks, so uh this is too much. I will say this is too much. Um, yeah, even for me. So um I just want to hear more about the the girl in the school and uh what grade, um where she is now. And, uh, I don't know where she like, is now. Is her booty hole okay? Is her clit okay? Like, what's going on? Like, just update. I don't Baby, know where she is now. You. He told I you. I don't actually know, like, anyone from my school anymore. Like, I, as soon as I left school, I was out of there. Like, I don't speak to any of them. Like, the mm-hmm. only one I still know anything about is a girl called Kelsey that I dated for three years in primary school. And her mom and my mom were really good friends until she passed away. And, like, I know now that she's done, like, the UK Olympics opening performance. She's done the Aladdin movie. Like, she's, like, big shit. So, like, she's the only other person I know of. Which which book is this hairbrush story in so I can uh, order it tonight, like, immediately, right now? <laughs> I think it's in book one. So you go in Pretty detail sure with, this, book. with this hairbrush girl. We're gonna give, We're going to call her hairbrush girl. Who fucks herself with hair brushes? So in school, do you go and do do yeah? Do you go into details because that is fucking hilarious? I'm interested now. Yeah. We caught her uh, um, in the changing rooms, essentially just like giving it a little bit of a rub. I don't know what to say. <laughs> she herself open because she was trying to take some big like. She was just kind of like thing. there and like just with the end of it rather than the brush bits. She was just kind of rubbing the front and then like putting it a little bit in and we were just like, oh my God, as if you're fucking yourself with the hair brush. <laughs> she must have been a virgin. She must have been a virgin because I don't think they had- Oh, she was you know, no she virgin. She couldn't get to a dildo. She couldn't get to a oh, dildo. Oh, she was no virgin. She, she was She was no virgin. Look, if you can sit here and improvise- She was no, she was no she virgin, no damn virgin. <laughs> Maybe she I got was a whole hungry. dildo I don't in know. my bag, and I got a little fucking toy right there in my fucking dresser, bitch. I'm gonna get myself loose. So Aaron, I'm look, confused. Anything around? I'm confused, Aaron. Dudes. I'm confused, Aaron. You said you don't you like small dicks, but you also talk about you like fisting or getting fisted. So I'm confused by but but. I have ne- first of all. That's a hand though. That's not a dick. I have never gotten fisted. I fisted somebody. Oh, okay. We've all been there. We've all been there. And, yeah. <laughs> Mickey, you've been... You've, I don't like big Mickey, dicks. you've been fisted before? Mm-mm. No, but I do like wearing people like Muppets. Look, Muppet baby. You know what? Don't suck it till you try it. It's very erotic, baby. It's very erotic. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, then, Aaron, you do it then and tell us how erotic it is. You say what? I said, do you have anything to say before I close this off and get out of here? <laughs> oh, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much crazy. for coming in and being with us here on TTV. Listen, you will always have a place over here to speak your truth however you want to fucking speak it. We are here thank for you. people to just be themselves. I thank you for using your music in a very awesome way. Uh, uh, even with the book, the fact that you were able to take something so traumatic and transmute it into something that was comedic that, you know, we're both laughing through this. You know what I mean? Because this in the past, you're, you're, you're better from it now. So I thank you for that and keep doing what you're doing and uh, keep preparing yourself because you're you're going up, man. You're taking heights and you're going to really be 
a trailblazer. You're already a trailblazer within your own right with just the way that you are and how you express yourself, the way that you think you're very, very creative. You're definitely an empath, a very, very <laughs> hardcore empath with all the feelings <laughs> and all that stuff. So, but, you know, just, just keep doing you and I'm excited. And um, yeah, just keep living. Keep living. Thank oh, you. Oh, yeah. Aaron, keep keep the hairbrush up. I want to see the hairbrush. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mickey Taylor. You can catch him on iTunes, Spotify, Twitter, SoundCloud, Patreon, OnlyFans, and everywhere the fuck else. Thank okay. you, guys. Thank you all. And thank you, Mickey Taylor. Thank you. Thank you much, guys, thank you so much for having me. Yes. And we are, oh, let me turn the card around. Oh, shit. And we are out this bitch, you guys. Bye. Here's my coming soon. Close door near you. <laughs>